so one of the hallmarks of neuromyelitis optica are the clinical attacks. And the clinical attacks often present with loss of vision in one or both eyes, uh, pain, painful loss of vision, and that's called optic neuritis. And then the other type of typical attack is associated with uh, numbness, lack of sensation, and weakness, typically involving the legs or arms and legs, sometimes with respiratory involvement as well. And when those attacks involve the spinal cord, we term those myelitis. Neuromyelitis optica also can have attacks involving the brainstem and can cause intractable nausea and vomiting when an area of the brainstem called the area postrema is affected. And so those are another type of attack. Uh, and so the symptoms come on typically within a matter of hours or days, and then they persist and often worsen and rarely will abate on their own. Typically individuals will experience um, irreversible tissue injury unless the attacks are treated aggressively with use of high dose corticosteroids and in many cases, plasma phoresis. So those are the attacks. And what we're trying to do of course is prevent disability associated with these acute attacks, prevent the attacks from occurring in the first place. And all three of the medications that received FDA approval showed very robust, impressively robust effects at attack prevention. So that's, that's the background on attacks. And so the inobilizumab study, which is called N-Momentum, uh, looked at the uh, capacity of inobilizumab versus placebo to reduce the frequency of attacks, and prevent attacks from occurring, and showed a robust effect in that regard. In this analysis, we wanted to demonstrate whether there is a difference in terms of efficacy between inobilizumab when it was used in individuals who are newly diagnosed, meaning those people who had had their first attack, versus individuals who had had more than one attack. In other words, people who had been uh, living with NMO for a, a period of time. And so uh, we, we simply looked at this and uh, asked this question and found that, of course, not surprisingly, uh, there was a very robust effect in, in both treatment groups. Individuals who had had um, a prior history of attacks really uh, were no different in terms of their therapeutic benefit to individuals who were newly diagnosed. And I, I think that's important because often uh, individuals who've been uh, living with NMO for some time and have had multiple attacks, uh, those individuals will often have been treated with other disease modifying therapies. Uh, at the time, of course, that this trial was done, there weren't any FDA approved treatments. And so all of those types of therapies were typically immune suppressants that were broad spectrum in nature. Some individuals had been treated with rituximab as well. And what we found was that regardless of prior treatment, regardless of number of attacks, uh, individuals could benefit from treatment with inoplizumab. The, the drug is actually very well tolerated. Infusion reactions are actually very uncommon with inoplizumab. In the randomized controlled trial, the uh, infusion reactions occurred more frequently in placebo than in, in uh, the inoplizumab treatment arm. And so that's, that's a nice feature of the drug. And that has to do with the fact that it doesn't cause much in the way of complement mediated lysis of B cells. So very well tolerated uh, medicine. The main issue with this medication is going to be the fact that uh, as it depletes plasma cells and plasma blasts, it will lower immunoglobulin levels over time. And so for long-term treatment, there are gonna be some individuals treated with inobolizumab who will develop hypogamma globulinemia. Now, gamma globulinemia uh, will uh, result in an increased propensity for infections. And now we haven't seen that yet, but almost certainly as this drug is used in clinical practice, we are going to see some infections associated with hypogamma globulinemia. And so I think that is going to be the risk associated with this particular product. There are other uh, B cell depleting therapies that have been um, FDA approved for other indications such as uh, rituximab uh, and uh, ocrelizumab and ofatumumab. And even though those medications are slightly different from inobolizumab, they've all also been associated with a small 
uh, but increased risk of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a potentially lethal brain virus infection. And so we think that inobolizumab might also carry a small risk of PML. Uh, there may be other risks. We know that these um, types of medications have been associated with reactivation of herpes virus. There's a, a small risk of herpes virus infections with these other types of medications that are anti-CD20s. It's conceivable that we may see uh, some of those risks uh, come out with inobolizumab treatment as well, although we haven't seen them to date. Thank you.